Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Explain This. I'm with the star of the show, Robin Riddle. Robin, how are you? Doing great. How about you? I am wonderful. And today is a topic that I, I know you deal with every single day in the office. Yeah. And that is TRT and fertility. And we're talking about specifically for men today. Yep. Um, and I know a lot of people are kind of in this boat. You yeah. know, they're they're being put on hormone therapy. They have low T levels. and and But they're still wanting to have kids. Yes. So talk us through that. Okay. So... <laughs> Unfortunately, with, you know, the, the exposures that we have through life now, a lot of men are developing low testosterone younger and younger. This, mm-hmm. not, this used to not be an issue. Usually it was men 50s, 60s plus, not really planning on having kids anymore at that point, so it wasn't a big deal. But I'm running into this, like you said, on a daily basis now where men come to me with symptoms of low T. We diagnose that, yes, testosterone is low. The first conversation that we need to have is, do you still plan on having kids? Yes. And when? Are we actively trying? Are we years down the road? What are we looking at here? Um, Because one of the main side effects of testosterone replacement therapy is a down regulation of FSH, follicle stimulating hormone production in the body, and LH, um, luteinizing hormone. We down regulate those, which leads to a decrease in the production of sperm. So infertility. Um, it is not a reliable means of birth control. It has been researched for that, but it's not reliable enough. So you cannot be on testosterone and tell someone you're infertile. That's not necessarily the case. Got it. But if we are actively trying to get pregnant or we know that that's coming up in the future, we definitely want to um, change up our testosterone replacement plan to accommodate for that. Because if you are on just testosterone replacement, be it um, gels, shots, pellets, whatever it may be, the likelihood of being infertile is pretty high. Okay. 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 So we have other options. Um, And this is for people who are either uh, considering going on testosterone, but still want to be fertile. These also apply to people who have used other steroids or testosterone in the past that have done some sort of damage to their fertility and we're struggling to get it back. Um, So the main medication that I really love for this is called HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. We are using this off-label, but it's a very common medication that is used for fertility. Often used for women trying to get pregnant, but it works very well for men as well. Mm -hmm. So HCG, it's a injectable medication that signals the body to increase LH, luteinizing hormone, which then signals the cells in the testicles to make more testosterone and is helping to signal for sperm production. Um, So again, we can use this almost like a, it's called post-cycle therapy. So someone who's used other steroids, anabolics, things like that, you can do post-cycle therapy therapy with HCG to replenish the body's natural testosterone production, get sperm production back on board. Um, You can also use HCG in combination with testosterone replacement therapy. Okay. And so that's kind of the best of both worlds. For people who have low testosterone, want to reliably get those levels up, but want to stay fertile while they're on it, we do a combination. And there have been studies done on this where they were using, I think in the studies they were using 200 milligrams a week of testosterone. It's not always that dose that, that changes. Um, but 500 IUs of HCG three to four times a week. Um, in those studies, no patients became infertile while they were on these medications and there was no change to baseline sperm production. So they did, they did tests before they put them on this. They put them on this for a certain amount of time. They did tests after Everything remained the same as far as fertility goes, but their testosterone levels went up, which is exactly what they were going for. Real quick, just because I know a lot of people, when they hear HCG, they think weight loss. Um, Right. What is the difference? Because I think it's units. It's it's, it's a different amount. Yes. We're dosing it very differently. So for weight loss, HCG is uh, 15 units a day along with a calorie-restricted diet. Okay. For testosterone levels, HCG is 500. Interesting. Three times a week. Okay. So it's dosed completely differently. Um, I I guess some people could see a little bit of weight change with that, but that's not what we're going for with that. We're going for getting testosterone levels up. So you can use HCG alone to get testosterone levels up, and it does work. It starts to have a, a tapering effect after a while. The body starts to get used to the doses that you're on. So you may not get the same effect out of it after after you've been on it for a bit. Um, and I can't always reliably say where we'll get your levels with HCG alone. 
but it is an option. And that is a, is that a, um, an option that you have to stick with until you get pregnant and then go into like full on HRT? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we can always change the plan. Okay. You can always start out with just HCG and see, see how you respond. You can start with HCG and testosterone. You can add the testosterone later. You can take the HCG away later. Super flexible, depending on what's going on. Okay. Um, the other medication that is a possibility also is a medication called Clomid. Mm -hmm. This one works a little bit differently. It actually blocks estrogen's action on the pituitary. Mm -hmm. So then the brain senses that you don't have enough estrogen in the body. So it's going to signal the production of LH, which LH is the one that goes to the testicles and signals the production of testosterone. So we're getting the LH levels up. We're getting the testosterone production just through a slightly different process. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, and again, when it comes to actual fertility, there's a lot of different ways that we can combine this. I've got some people that I do testosterone, HCG, and Clomid because we need extra stimulation. We're just not getting where we need to be. This could be a dumb question, but could this make somebody more fertile? Yes. Okay. So in one of the studies, they actually showed a 26% increase from baseline just in using the testosterone and the higher doses of the HCG. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I, I yeah. was listening. I'm like, man, that, that could have like like the effect you're wanting if, yeah. you're, if you're wanting to get pregnant. Yeah. So for this video, I'm talking specifically about fertility. We do have patients that will use um, HCG or Clomid or something like that because they just want to keep the body's natural production on board. Got it. Um, because with the infertility, with the body not producing more of its own testosterone, there is testicular atrophy. There can be some other side effects that some men don't like. So I do Got have it. patients who are not really trying to get pregnant, but they still want the body's production on board. These are the same medications that we use for that. Got it. I'm just dosing it differently, usually a little bit more aggressively when we're trying to be fertile and remain fertile. Super interesting. And I know like a lot of people deal with this sort of thing every single day. Yeah. So thank you for explaining yeah. this. Is there, is there anything, any parting advice that we need to? Well, I just want everybody to understand there are ways to do hormone replacement therapy and still be able to maintain fertility and have kids. Yeah. You've just got to talk to someone who knows how to do it. Well, and there's, there's strategies to it. And it's, you know, you certainly don't want to go on hormone therapy uh, without having these types of discussions. Absolutely. Because it does impact your life. And, it does. and this is a big life decision. It does. And if you've been on testosterone before through someone else, we can always cycle in something like this and regain the fertility that we were mm. looking for. So if it's been suppressed for a while, it's still fixable. Again, you've just got to go to someone who knows what they're doing. Robin, thank you for explaining this today. Absolutely. Guys, this has been Explain This with Robin Merrill. We really appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with us today. Uh, as always, we'll see you all next time. Don't go away.